Hi, everybody. Welcome to Stamping with Melva. I'm Melva Peters, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in British Columbia, Canada. And you can find me online at stampingwithmelva.com. It's Wednesday today, and on Wednesdays, I jump on at 2 o'clock Pacific and share a technique with you. So on, I'm going to say Saturday or Sunday, I don't remember which of the days, I made a card using um, re-inkers and made a kind of a wash background with the re-inkers, kind of watercolor, on watercolor paper. Um, and I said I would share um, what I call abstract stamping or abstract watercolor stamping. Um, and so it's a way of stamping using the ink pads with spritzer and you get this kind of really cool watercolor technique or watercolor image from it. Um, and you can do it a couple of different ways. I really love this. Um, makes me feel like an artist, which I never feel like I'm an artist. So it's kind of a way of doing that watercolor painting. Um, and like I said, there's two different ways to do it. You can either um, ink up your stamp um, and then spritz the stamp, or you can um, spritz your watercolor paper, your Fluid 100 watercolor paper, and then and then um, ink up your stamp. So you're, you're, hey, Claudia, you're welcome. So a couple of different ways, you get a little bit different technique or a little different look from both of those ways. So I thought I would make, um, do both and show you. And then I may only make one card, but I've got the materials to, to make two um, using both of them. So we'll see how it goes. Um, so let me switch over. And so I've used this same, um, bundle on the card I made on, I think it was Saturday. Um, it's called Forever Forest. It was a bundle in the catalog, the um, September to December mini catalog, and it carried over. So I don't think it's available anymore as a bundle um, price. So you don't get the 10% off, but both the stamp set and the dies carried over. So I'm kind of excited. I haven't, didn't have this um, when the catalog was actually live, I got it afterwards because I thought it would make some really cool, um, cool cards uh, with the, particularly the dies. Okay, so let's get on. That's the bundle I'm using. So I dropped a, a die. That's not good. Okay, so let's start with doing the watercoloring because it takes a little bit um, of time to dry. So I'm going to use the two um, this this stamp, which is a really big stamp with the three trees on it, and then this set of smaller trees over here. Um, so I'll use different ones for different cards. So we'll do one um, one in one way and one in another. And I have got a piece of the Fluid 100 watercolor paper. So you definitely need to use this. Um, our card stock doesn't really like to have a lot of water put on it. The when we used to have the shimmer one shimmer. Um, cardstock. Um, it was a little bit better. It would hold up a little better to adding a lot of water, but this Fluid 100 watercolor paper, um, so I think it comes, yeah, five by seven. Um, so I'm going to, I may be able to get both of these images out of the same one. Just depends on how much it, it um, moves, the watercolor or the, the ink moves around once I get it wet. So I've got Mossy Meadow, Old Olive, and pecan pie. Those are my three colors that I may try to use. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so for the first technique, the first way I do this is, this is actually my favorite way of doing it. So I'm going to take my um, stamp and I'm going to apply some ink. Now I'm gonna try and do it so I get a, a little bit of um, different color. So I'm kind of just blotting. This is a really big, what size this is? This is the size F block, which I find really hard um, to hang on to. So I always kind of ink up from the top. And I'm just going to add a little bit. So this is pecan pie. So I'm just kind of inking over top. And then we'll add some old olive. Just wanting to get a little bit of a trees aren't exactly all the same color. So there we go. I don't know what that's going to turn out like, but that. Um, that's a start. Okay, so I'm gonna move my ink pads out of the way for the moment. So the first technique, we've inked up our ink pad. And now I've got a spritzer with just water in it. I mark, I have spritzers and I have some with water and some with alcohol. So I just took a permanent marker and marked water on these so I don't get them mixed up. 
And now we're going to take and just spritz up this um, stamp. And now we're going to press down on here. Now, one of the, the difference between the technique, um, the other technique where you ink up your, or you spritz your, your paper um, is that the, oh, I didn't get a lot of the different colors that I was hoping to, but that's okay, a little bit. So the color doesn't, the ink doesn't move around as much, but you can see the kind of technique or the look to this. You're not getting those crisp, sharp images you would get if you just re-inked it. And I like the fact that I've got more of the watercolor um, on these two than this one. So you never really know what you get, but you just kind of get a really cool, really cool watercolor image. Now, so that's that one. We're gonna do the same on this one. Now I'm gonna just take, I want this to dry and I, I don't want to get, so I'm just gonna take and cut this. I probably should have cut this in half. So I'm gonna let this piece dry. And now we're gonna do the same um, to this piece. Now, what we wanna do is, first of all, I'm gonna ink up mine. So this is, this is a pecan pie. So we'll do it maybe a little bit differently. We have some pecan pie, and then we've got some old olive. Again, I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but we'll see if we get some different colors. And then this is the mossy meadow. Okay, so I've got my three colors. Now, instead of spritzing my stamp like I did the last time, I'm gonna take my spritzer and I'm going to spritz my paper. Now, I've got a fair amount of water on this, so you have to, if you don't want your, your ink to move all over the place, um, you don't wanna maybe ink it up or spritz it up with so much water um, like I did. Okay, now I can already see the ink moving around. So if you keep it flat, the ink will stay, and I won't stay in its place. It just still kind of bleeds around. But if you kind of tip it, it will um, definitely move around. So you can kind of see the difference. This is definitely um, much more abstract um, than these are. I love these trees, how they turned out. And if you get too much water, so I have, before I can make a card, I definitely am going to have to um, clean that up. Um, I'm going to have to use my uh, heat tool on this. So I'm just going to take and use a baby wipe just to pick up some of the, the obvious um, blotches of water that I have on here. Okay, that's kind of enough of that. Now, I definitely need my heat tool to dry this. And the cord's caught. There we go. All right, so I'm going to take my heat tool. I'm going to try and keep this flat. Otherwise, because I've still got a fair amount of water, you can move it around even more. It looks cool, too. So you just want to kind of, if you haven't blotted out the, the water, um, so you see how much more abstract these trees are than, than these ones. We're going to die cut these, so hopefully they'll uh, have a little bit more tree shape than uh, they do at the moment. At the moment it looks kind of like just like gloves. And this one's pretty dry because the paper didn't get as wet as that. Okay, so now where are my dies? They are here. So I've already gone ahead and cut out some of these standalone tree ones because I really like them. So this is the one. Let's get this off the tape. There we go, that's that one. And then this is this one. All right, so let's do this one first. I love the coloring. You can kind of change up the color and some's lighter and some's darker, which is really a cool technique. All right, so we're just gonna put some water, um, some post-it note tape 
down on this one and the same on this one. This one's going to be a little bit harder to kind of figure out where the, I think that's. So if you wanted to, because this one definitely is much more abstract, I can do some stamping um, on, on this one just to give it a little bit more um, dimension. Bring in my stamp and cut and emboss. Because I cut my paper, I can do use my mini. The Fluid 100 paper cuts nicely. Um, sometimes yeah, it's cut through. You do have to watch and make sure. And I think that one will even go through. Perfect. Okay, so and then we can make make some cards and you can see the difference between these two techniques. So I'm excited to announce um, that I am going to be doing some technique classes with my friend Lorraine Tierney, who is a demonstrator in, I believe, New Hampshire in the United States. And so it's the first time I've actually been able to, you know, offer um, Kind of partner with somebody in the U.S. And so if you live in the U.S. and you watch me and you want to participate in the class, you'll be able to purchase the class um, from Lorraine. Or if you live in Canada, you can purchase it um, from me. So I'm excited to do that. And so the first one, um, I believe, is April and it is watercoloring. So we're going to offer two different or uh, four different watercolor techniques um, with the class. So I'll get some more information out um, on that um, coming up. All right, so there are my two die cuts. Um, so we will uh, we will make some cards using that. So I've gone ahead and kind of done a little bit in advance. So I've done some die cutting with these trees. Um, there is also this background. Um, I cut that out of pecan pie. I don't know which of these I'm going to actually use. But I cut two card bases. Um, out of Mossy Meadow. And get my, my paper trimmer. So these are five and a half by eight and a half. So we're going to score both of them at four and a quarter. Everybody's very quiet today. I can see some people watching. So tell me where you're from, where you're watching from. Let me know if you've ever tried this technique before. All right, so I'm going to grab my bone folder. So as always, I have scored it at four and a quarter and fold into the mountain or the raised line. Okay, so that's one, let's do one. Okay, so then I cut a piece of pecan pie. Yes, welcome. Um, out of, uh, so this is four inches by five and a quarter. And then I cut a piece of very vanilla. Um, that's three and three quarters by five. And I use the, can you see that? The, there we go. The timber, I think it's called timber um, embossing folder because I thought it was kind of appropriate. So So this is longer. I'm going to trim this off in just a minute, but I thought that it would be kind of cool to just pop up those, those trees. Okay, so we're going to glue my... Hey, Sarah, welcome. So I'm going to glue my mountains down to my piece that I have embossed. Again, this was three and three quarters by by five, so we'll glue that down. And then I can take my paper snips and just trim the ends like that. Now I'm gonna take my stamp that I used, which has still got a bunch of ink on it. And I'm gonna add some pecan pie, just lightly add and it's not going to be perfect because I don't actually know there. I'm just going to take it 
And I just, and you can probably not really see that, but I just wanted to add a little bit of detail to my trees. So I just kind of overstamped it, uh, stamped over my embossed or my um, watercolor image um, using the pecan pie. So I'm going to use my glue, uh, dimensionals. And we will pop these trees up. that. And then I have a couple of the little ones. Let's see. I might not use those on this one. I might just keep this one pretty simple like that. I didn't bring any ribbon or twine out, but I did bring some um, embellishments that I'll add to this. So this would make a nice sympathy card, a thinking of you card. Those trees need the mountains. Yeah, they would have been pretty plain without the mountain in the background. Okay, there we go. Now, let's, I'll, I'll figure out the sentiment in just a minute. Um, I think for this one, I'm going to make it um, a portrait card. Although I've got my, my wood grain going the wrong way, so maybe I'm not. Okay, so these ones can kind of be, that's why I thought a portrait card would have been good, but since I've got the wood grain going the wrong way, that's not going to work. So we'll do it this way. Um, well, let's just see. These have got little bits. You might take your pick tool. It's here somewhere, but I've got my paper snips. Maybe something like that. Okay, so I'm going to just take this little one. Just going to put a little bit of glue. Instead, just put that one down like that. And then there's all sorts of. So when I when I look for a stamp for this kind of technique. I look for fairly large um, stamps and I look for ones that have the detail to them. So I was thinking about those, um, I can't remember the name of the stamp. It's in the mini catalog um, and it has all the blueberries on it. But I just, I want something that's actually got the, the detail to it like this does, which, hmm. all right, my stamp set, oh, there it is. So this has got kind of the detail um, to it, as opposed to the blueberries that you're great for coloring, but not so much. You don't get the detail inside. So you want something that's got the detail inside the actual image when you're looking for something to use. Um, the one I absolutely loved was the stamp set from a few years ago that had the pomegranate on it. Um, it, it was such a fun one to, uh, to use this this technique with. All right, so I think I'm good with this one. I did cut out a bunch of the little tiny, the little tiny trees, but I'm not sure I'm going to use any of them. We'll see. No, I think I'm just going to Okay, I'm going to leave them as they are. And I've got my insides. And then the last thing I need is, hmm. okay, I've got my insides. I have to grab some uh, very vanilla to do uh, sentiment on. Thought I had brought that over. Okay, I pulled, um, because I thought these would be good, you know, thinking of you, um, this sentiment from the softly sophisticated stamp set. This is a bundle that is available during celebration. You get the stamp set and an embossing folder that's really pretty, but this You're In My Thoughts is, is a really pretty um, sentiment to use. So 
I've used, oh, yeah, I haven't used this sentiment before. So I'm just going to, so surprise, surprise, today I'm actually not going to fussy cut my sentiment. So if I'm trying to figure out what size my sentiment is, I will use grid paper and just kind of put it in the grid and see how big it is. And so this is just an inch by, but an inch by two inches if I was really skimpy on one side of it. Um, so I think I'm going to cut two pieces that are two inches long and an inch and an eighth wide. So just, just big enough for the sentiment. And I may, I may uh, kind of curse myself for doing this because I don't often don't stamp very well when I've got to make sure I get it in a straight. So I'm going to cut this one two and a quarter wide. So this is pecan pie. And then an inch and three eighths. So just making it that quarter inch bigger than the size of my very vanilla. So this would be the mat um, on my sentiment layer. Okay. So let's see how we do with um, stamping. And I'm going to stamp in pecan pie. So this is when you remember that there are actually, oh, it's actually a photopolymer. So that's giving me a, a better chance of getting this straight on there. But remember, there's always two sides to, to these pieces of cardstock. So if you kind of get it a little skew if as my mom used to say, um, you can always turn it over and use the other side. So because it's quite a wide, I'm going to stagger my, my dimensionals so it doesn't get wobbly in the middle, doesn't sag. And then this can go on like that. All right, let's do this one first because I have a much bigger space to get. So we'll put that on like that. And I'm just going to adhere it on with liquid glue um, because I've already got the dimensionals. So we won't pop it up any further than it needs to be. Like that. All right. Okay. We'll do the same on this one. Just put it in just a little bit different. Maybe put it tucked underneath like that and over. There we go. Okay, now I pulled out the brushed metallic uh, dots, which I thought would go nicely with um, this kind of kind of masculine card. And because I've got the pecan pie, I'm going to use the copper because it, I think the copper goes nicely with pecan pie. Put one there. And then one there. And it's funny when you, I get new, new embellishments. Um, when a new catalog comes out and my poor old, the older embellishments from the previous catalog kind of, I think they feel a little forgotten because I forget to use them. All right, so I'm going to take old olive. I'm going to butt these two up against each other. And then I'm just going to take and stamp my stamp. Oh, I didn't get it very straight, but that's okay. So that I've got my something on the inside of my card. I could have used some of the die cuts that I had um, cut out, but that's okay. Like that. And... I 
if I had taken a blending brush to my mountains, I would have got a bit of definition to them, which would have been kind of cool. Okay, there we go. There are my two cards. Now this one, remember, was done by um, inking up my stamp and then stamping on to um, wet Fluid 100 watercolor paper. So much more of an abstract look to those trees. And then this one was done by inking up my stamp set and then spritzing the stamp set. So you get a little bit of that watercolor effect um, on this one and then less as I had, I obviously had less water on this side. So just depends on how much you wet up um, your, your uh, how much you spritz um, either the paper or your stamp set. But anyway, those are the two techniques. I love these techniques. I find that I just, they're so much fun, partly because I, you never know what you're going to get. And I love that. Um, and I know that's not for everybody, but it's kind of fun just not knowing um, what the look is going to be at the end. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for uh, waiting and being patient as I made two cards, but I really wanted to show you what the look was. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, with how these cards turned out. So tomorrow I will, does the mountain have an imprint? Yes, it is. Let's see if I can show you can you there we go you can see it does it has an embossed um part to it so it definitely if you took um your blending brush with pecan pie or something like that you could make those um impressions look um just kind of pop out uh so tomorrow i will be live uh, with a mystery challenge and i will um, share the mystery with you uh, it's going to be a tic-tac-toe challenge so um you can come play along with me, um, grab what you need and make a card with me tomorrow at two o'clock Pacific. All right, everybody. Thanks. Uh, thanks for joining me. Happy stamping. Bye.